Yo, what's up with y'all, man? I hope you're doing good. If you're new and you're a fan of the NBA, subscribe to this channel. So let's just straight into it. Now that we're basically done with the greatest options, not only I, but you have seen in your life, we can relax for just a bit and get back to our rhythm, our flow, our mojo. So since Summer League came around and all of, well, not all of, because all of these dudes didn't play. But for a bunch of the rookies who did end up playing, they were able to show us why they were drafted where they were. And a couple of specific players showed us that they should have been taken way higher than they actually did in the draft. They proved this through their performance in Summer League. Now, before I go on with this video, I have one, no wait, I have two things to say. I consistently preach this and have been doing so for like a year now. This is my philosophy. Philosophy. That don't even sound right. Philosophy. Whenever I try to scope out and scan just how good these young prospects are in college or maybe even overseas, I'm not the type to stat hunt. I'm sorry, I'm just not that type of person. You will never ever see me base an argument off of stats, and if you do, I was glitching. And to be honest, I would be wasting my time doing that. Because college and summer league compared to the National Basketball Association is a different beast. There are countless amounts of players who were GOAT worthy college and summer league performers, but were cheeks, buns, toast as soon as they entered the league. And that also works and vice versa as well. Did you guys know that guys like Stephen Curry, LeBron James, Kevin Durant, D. Rose, all had horrible summer league performances. They all shot either 37% from the field or lower. Meanwhile, guys like Brandon Jennings and Jennifer Fredette went crazy. Don't let these stats fool you, don't get pulled into the hype. Now trust me, I know it's hard and I know it's tantalizing because it's all in the moment. That's what screws people up. You just have to resist though. Instead of eyeing stats, why don't you instead take a look at a player's confidence? How comfortable he is handling the ball and making plays, not backing down from any competition. Take a look at all of these things, the things that most people that fly right above their head. Skill set. Skill set is the most important trait. It is key when it comes to these these type of things. Quick commercial break. Before I continue on with this video, I want to plug in not my clothing brand, even though you should go check it out. But I want to plug something else instead. Now look, since I use all these exotic beats and instrumentals on my channel, I attract a lot of artists and rappers in my DMs and my email, continuously asking me to play their stuff through my videos. And I'm sorry, my boy, like I appreciate the support if you support me for real, but I'm not gonna do it, and I'm just being real. But lucky for you, I know someone who will. Someone who has created a platform to specifically do this type of stuff. To help promote not only artists and music creators, but creators in general. So if you're a rapper consistently hitting my DMs and my emails, don't hit me up no more, okay? Hit up Visions Forever Entertainment. Go ahead and give him a follow on Instagram. The man is doing great things, just pushing other people's dreams. But anyways, on with the show. Carson Edwards, prior to his ridiculous March Madness run, really wasn't a talked about prospect at all. His name didn't carry much weight until the final three games he played at Purdue. His highlights across the nation went brazy. All of a sudden, this six foot one, red headed, light skinned dude is out here flooding timelines across IG and Twitter. During that infamous run, he was averaging 34 points on nearly seven three pointers being made per night. The bombs that this small but feisty guard was throwing up was hella contested and incredibly tough to make considering the degree of difficulty. That little four game run is what drastically improved his stock. Now on this channel I specifically remember talking about Carson Edwards just one time. And that was during my rankings video that I made like a month or two ago. I've always liked him, don't get me wrong, but at the same time I felt like his potential was very limited. Limited because of his play style, skill set, and physical attributes. He has a similar build to Kyle Lowry and Raymond Felton. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did I write that? Bro, that's disrespect. I might need to cut this out. Okay, he doesn't have a similar build. That, that was very disrespectful. My bad. He has a similar stature. Is that better? I hope so. He's in much better shape than them, okay? He's not fat. But it's still comparable, to say the least. The thing about Carson, though, that made me so unsure about his potential was his consistency and his ability to affect the game when he's not hitting confidence killing threes on opposing defenses. Because this man is not a legit playmaker like that at all. Even though that may be a slight issue, we gotta add a key factor to this, something that can never be left out when you're talking basketball. 
context. Back in college, in his specific situation, the type of talent that was surrounded around him wasn't ideal and everything revolved around him. But in Summer League, he played with much better talent. The game opened up a lot and that made things so much easier for him. His confidence can easily be felt by just the way he shoots the ball off of the screen in a split second or maybe even off of the dribble. His game was tailor-made for today. Watching this short but trigger-happy dread-headed guard get bucket after bucket after bucket in Summer League was an abundance of swagger just gives me, ironically enough, Isaiah Thomas vibes. Now because of his situation and the opportunity not being there day one, since Kemba Walker is in his way and isn't going anywhere anytime soon. But if just if for some reason the NBA is a wild place man, if the C's don't need Kemba then Carson could easily fill in the starting PG spot for this team for years to come. Until then though he will be playing an important scoring role off of the bench for them. Five years or maybe even three or four depending on how things go. So life is crazy. I'm gonna give it five years though until he leaves every everyone in the league questioning why he was a second round pick. This little community that me and you have going on right now, we know we are woke, trust me, believe it. On this side, we been noon, we're ahead of the jump. But the rest of the NBA world is set to explode soon once they hear about this dude right here. One of the players some of you guys have repeatedly talked about on my channel is Brandon Clark. On this side of NBA YouTube, he is one of the, what, four or five guys out of the draft that I low-key stand. Now listen up, I could, just like the rest of them, get carried away by just the numbers. Instead though, I'm gonna talk about what he brings to the game and how he displayed the whole shebang in Summer League. His defense is his bread and butter. That is who he is. That is who this man prides himself as. A defensive monster. All the energy that he uses on the end of the floor has started to expand and it is expanding all the way out to the three-point line now he's not known as a knockdown player yet and he may not ever will be but he is taking them and he's taking them with consistency and confidence with all of the other things that he does well having minimum contact with the ground and springing up all the way to the rim those pogo stick like legs allows him to play great defense and be a great help defender this dude is damn near the perfect role player what what else do you want from your modern day four if you want more you're asking for low key two much. I'm not gonna lie, man, but I need names. I need names of those 21 idiots who let Brandon Clark walk past by their sight in the draft. In my mock draft, I swear to you, I thought he was going in the lottery. I was shook, shocked that no one took him that early. But not too shook, because, you know, then I realized, uh, yeah. He is 22 years old. And rebuilding teams nowadays do not mess with older rookies. But man, guys like Brandon are going to put that little stigma to an end soon. A team like the Phoenix Suns or maybe even the Minnesota Timberwolves if they didn't want their cover and didn't end up trading their pick could have easily bagged this man and use him as a security blanket whenever DeAndre Ayton or even Carl Anthony Towns has those natural defensive lapses. This man would be the peanut butter to their jelly, the butter to their bread, the water to their plant. They would have been perfect. But now instead, he is going to be flourishing in Memphis and creating possibly the best front court defensive duo in the NBA in two to three years. Ooh, man, I'm not going to lie. Some of you guys' favorite team screwed up big time. Four years ago, the Phoenix Suns selected a 6'6 guard from Kentucky who was just seen as a potential key role player, a floor spacer for their superstar. Just a spot up shooter. But he actually ended up being the star in a short span of time in Phoenix. Four years later, here we are in 2019, another guard similar to his build. Ironically enough, coming out of the same school, you know his name, Tyler Hero. Now, I spoke about him just like Carson Edwards for a very short amount of time on my channel, but I do specifically remember saying this. Tyler Hero. Now, I just ranked Tyler at number five. Oh, my bad. That was disgusting. Let me stop that. Anyways, I ranked him at number five, but I don't say that with too much confidence. Because in the league, he could easily be much more productive than a few of these guys I just named before. His combination of shooting and being a facilitator on the low and a hard worker on defense is gonna take him a long way in the league. He's for sure one of the most safest picks in this draft. He has a real chance of becoming an all-star one day. Because of his skill set and mindset on the court, he's a shooter, yes, a great one, but he isn't limited in any way. He got the label 
label the stamp of being a shooter just like D Book, when in reality he's just a flat out scorer. A scorer who is also talented at dishing out the ball and running the offense in certain stints. Now due to Jimmy Butler being in Miami and potentially CP3 too, I just don't know how fast he can reach his potential. But if the opportunity presents itself, then it's just bound to happen. He is going to be an all-star one day. His energy, swagger, and vibe on the court just resembles one of a star in the league. Now Tyler didn't fall far in the draft at all. He was just number 13 like Devin Booker. So right now it's not really looking that bad at all because he was a lottery pick. He made it out. But give it four or maybe five years from now, that could be a completely different story. Nikhil Alexander Walker, my god, him, uh, that dude right there, along with a couple of other players, will be fighting, dog fighting over the infamous quote unquote steal of the draft title. The Pelicans scooped him up with the 17th overall pick, a heist, a robbery, someone called the police because they just got a steal. He very well could end up being a top two to three guard out of the draft. And I say this with confidence, he's a lengthy guard just like his cousin Shai Gilgis Alexander, but he's just so much more smoother than him because he gets to a spot in just one motion. Watching him play is almost as entertaining as watching that boy Mojo 99. The kill has the same exact subtle explosiveness as his cuzzo, but it's just at another level because of his athleticism. That athlete that is in him is what blessed him to be such a distracting and disruptive defender. He could very well be a top 10 player out of this draft. He has fringe all-star type of potential. Now he is in New Orleans, and if you scope out their roster for just a quick second, the opportunity isn't necessarily ideal, because there's so many ball handlers on this team. They got Alonzo, Ingram, and Drew Holiday. If something ever happens to one of those guys though, whether it's an injury or a trade, they'll be just fine because they have this stud stored up waiting to just explode. He just needs water to blossom. Water in this case is his opportunity. Now to put this video to an end, sadly, I'm going to give you just two random prospects. Two prospects who I feel like will be pretty good role players for a long time in the NBA. These two guys right here, Dylan Windler and also Keldon Johnson, will be giving your favorite team problems for years. That is it. That is all I had to say about them. They're good. This is the end of the video though man, I really really do appreciate you for coming over here on my channel and seeing what I have to talk about today. Before I go, I gotta let you know that I appreciate all the birthday wishes that you guys sent me man, I wasn't expecting messages like that at all, but um, yeah, all the love that you guys are showing me were overwhelming, a good type of overwhelming though, and also um, shout out to the giveaway winner. Quinn Riley on Instagram. Hopefully by the time this video comes out, you got your jersey already, or maybe it should be there in a few days. But um, yeah, anyways, if you want a chance to be just like Quinn Riley and win an NBA jersey, all you have to do is follow me on Instagram and like every single one of my pics. I'm back and I'm better and I'm gonna keep this thing going. I really, really do appreciate you for coming over here on my channel and seeing what I have to talk about today. Make sure you leave a like, comment, subscribe, and also share this video with all your other friends. Don't be greedy. Don't be like that. Share the love. Share the vibe. But um, check out my clothing shop. Go ahead, get fresh. And um, yeah, until then, I'll get right with you. Make the day great. Or night. No way, no way, yeah, yeah. Send me back when I couldn't get a play, yeah, yeah. No hope, I ain't have a place to stay, yeah, yeah. I got the work, made it surf, free the way, yeah, yeah. Tell my girl.